Okay, Adam, what's up, dude? Okay, here we're going. I just tabbed out Jolene. I listened to it. I don't really know the song, but I've heard people sing it from my friend Darlene. Unfortunately, the song is in C sharp minor, which is kind of a, a bitch, to be honest. Um, so what I did, there's a few ways you can get around that, but the like the one that I did is I just made a recording and I brought it up a semitone, so it's now in D minor. And D minor is a much better key for banjo. You could capo one and play it at a C sharp minor, or you could convince the band to do it in D minor, or you can have a separate banjo tuned up a half step so you can play it at a D minor, but C sharp minor is not going to get you very far in life. But um, I will play you what I tabbed out, and it uh, it goes like this. Um, well, let me get the volume up a little bit. Okay, here we go. So that's basically what I got. Um, okay, so let me start explaining to you. The groove that happens, the first four bars, um, basically what I am training you to do is be, I'm training your yin. I don't know how much you're into Chinese philosophy, but I got really into Chinese philosophy. And yin, at least in my opinion, is very important in music when you're playing at a, at a gig or whatever. You're not gonna be asserting like a solo a lot of the time, like 80% of the time you're gonna be backing up. And what's really important to do as a banjo player is just play a role and just played over chords. And so what I did for this entire section of backup that I have basically up to up to here is I'm just playing this role. And the role is, it's basically this much is a um, forward backward. Um, I labeled the chords for you, but basically this, you got thumb forward and then you have middle reverse and that's basically a forward backward role. Um, over D minor, I'm technically that note, it's a D minor seven, but um, it's less confusing if it just says D minor. Um, so the roll, it goes like this. And then the next, uh, and then you got a square roll there and a square roll there. The interesting thing about the square, when you have that note right there, it's a book, um, book, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So it gets this nice, um, It has this very syncopated feeling to it. And so I just basically treated that as, I mean, when I played along with the song, that's the first thing that came out of me. And it seems uh, very scalable. So then what I did, um, I mean, this whole thing, these four bars of D minor, uh, is you're just, you're just vamping with the band. I mean, and listen how nice it sounds. Um. <laughs> So then when we go to here, we're basically gonna stick around the same roll, except move through the chords. But the chords are displaced, so you're switching chords every two beats. So you got D minor for two beats, F for two beats here. Um, notice we are sticking with the 16 note roll, even though each uh, chord only gets two beats. So this measure, um, you got that four back roll and then two square rolls. And then same thing here, four back roll two square rolls. And then here, she actually has two beats of uh, of just rest, because I think she's going like, and then here we go back to the, the same 16 roll, four backward roll, and then uh, two squares. Okay, so that should be basically self-explanatory. I think it, when we do a lesson next time, all we could get into variations you can do, but for now, if you can just get yourself to be able to like play like the like, heart of it, which is just um, like playing over these chords or just like up to there. It's just, just play that role and switch chords. And you gotta do that effortlessly. And don't forget to breathe. It's very important if you wanna get into that. You know, I figured out, I, I think, it was, was it you? It was like, it kind of inspired me. I was like thinking about our lesson and you were like wondering why you can't play music like your friend who's been playing for, you know, like years or something like that. The guitar player, who you, you can play better licks than him. And like, I think it said, I said something along the lines where he's got like a better ear. I forget exactly what it was. Maybe it has nothing to do with that. But I, what I wanted to say is that better musicians have better auditory imaginations. And if you can imagine it, you can play it. 
and I don't mean to say like you can imagine it like like Barney and like like the blue dinosaur kind of thing, but like like if you can actually think and have clarity of what you intend to play musically, um, you will be able to execute it depending on how clearly you can imagine the sound. Auditory imagination. The more clarity you have in your auditory imagination, the better of a magician uh, musician you'll be. It's not in your fingers. It's in your auditory imagination. They say your ear, but really it's actually your auditory imagination. It's a very important phrase and I just thought of it the other day, but it actually is your auditory imagination. What you are, what your fingers will do, it's not in your fingers, it's in your auditory imagination. Your fingers will do whatever you can imagine. That's really it. it I mean, it's like, you know, it's like, some, I mean, if you want to get all woo woo about it, they say like, oh, like I'm like telekinetic or what do they say? Like I'm clairvoyant. Like I can see things that are not there. Like I'm like, uh, what's the other thing they say? Like I'm clair audioistic or there's like a you know like these woo woo people they're like oh i can imagine things it's like well actually yes you can close your eyes and imagine things and i think when people become telepathic like when they close their eyes it won't be all fuzz but they'll actually be able to project their thoughts into other people's imaginations but nonetheless if you want to be a good musician you got to be able to imagine things very clearly and that is a skill to be developed it's not in your fingers um it's actually in your auditory imagination. Anyways, that's kind of a rant, but you know, you know I love you and I know you put up with me. Anyways, this solo, uh, let me just play this for you up to there, because that's kind of the melody, actually. It kind of it actually is kind of like eager and anxious. Um, just because of the way it approaches the arpeggios. So here it is. Uh uh. And then, and then I repeat it because it's, it's sweet. Um, but, uh. It's up to you to play along with the recording and have it smoothed it out. By the way, I, uh, I, I'll, I'll send you, I'll export this song. I, I put it in D minor so you have something to play along with. It isn't C sharp minor because C sharp minor can suck. Uh, okay, so basically let's talk through this. Okay, so now we're basically playing in D minor, but the licks are still the same. Um, well, you know what's actually kind of important to realize is that the entire melody is going to be based off the first string. So you can go like, like this. Like then you'll, then all you got to do is add the forward rules to it. And then the double stops. Um, yeah. You'll get the double stops. I mean, you got like basically like a C chord. You got a D minor chord. You have another D minor chord. Another D minor chord. Oh, that's seven six. Uh, you got C here, and then and then this guy I threw it in there. We haven't really gone over much melodic stuff, but that's definitely a melodic lick that I thought fit into the melody. You have this. I mean, um, please don't let me take your man. She hits that note. Uh, that that's a ray 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 do. Um, but we'll get into melodic stuff later when, when, when you're, when you're old enough. So, uh, let's see. Um, basically what you want to look out for is the Bob Dabalina rolls. We've gone over this. This one's ba tika taka tika index and then index forward middle and then index forward. So this, this measure, don't be intimidated. Ba tika taka tika ba tika taka tika. I tried to, I think I started all of them with index forwards just about that one starts in index forward. It's a lot of Bob Dabalina rolls. So this measure, uh, uh. And then of course you have like the um, the uh, um, what do you call it? the eager and anxious kickoff. Uh, and then here, uh, uh, and then we actually see we switch from here to reverse rolls all the way to there, and that's uh, from D minor to D minor. This that's a D minor inversion. That's an alpha D minor. This is a uh, a gamma D minor for your for your. It's like from first inversion to third inversion, but. Uh, so anyways, from here, well, what's, why don't we just play this phrase and you'll kind of hear it. Um, so we got Bob Dabalina. And then a thing to note here, you got a reversal. And how, I'd kind of improvise this, but basically you can see on the rhythmic measuring tape, you land with that five, that G note, on the downbeat. And not a beat off. <laughs> so this phrase... Uh, And then you got this thing. I forget if we've kind of done this, but it's basically we're taking three note groups. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. 
and going um, from uh, uh, going from like a C to a D minor to a C, but it's more like a scalar thing. Uh, uh, it's just like you're doing three forward rolls and switching p uh, left hand positions every th every three notes. And then finally, you have um, this. Uh, you can throw your thumb right there if you want, like we kind of talked about last time. Again, that's a substitution. I would read this as like two one two one two one, but when it comes actually to playing it, you want to throw thumbs in there on the second string. Uh, let's see, and then you got. Um, Okay, then you got this thing. This, uh, 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 okay, so starting from, so this is basically phrase. It's kind of like a hot lick. It's just like a, a thing. Uh, uh, wait, uh, what is it? Oh, it's like, you want to start it here with the Bob Dobelina. Yeah, it's, uh, Oh, it's it's displaced. It's displaced because it comes out of this melody, so it is gonna be kind of weird. Yeah, I think what you want to aim for is this phrase actually. Uh, it just kind of fits in like that thumb two right there is a filler or two thumb is a filler for this lick. Uh, uh, And then, and then this guy, square roll, square roll. Um, that thing, that, should, that shouldn't be that difficult for a banjo expert like you. Um, and then this guy, I mean, no way, that's a square roll too. That's a square roll too. It's all square rolls. That whole thing is square rolls. And then this, you just gotta have a, uh, you just gotta start it with an index roll. Oh my God, no way. It's, it's, it's an in, so from here to here, that's why it works. It's just, a, that's a, that's just an index forward roll after the Bob Dublina. Uh. Yeah. You just got to follow through with these forward rolls and you'll get it. Listen to it. It's, it's something that I improvise. So it can't really explain it beyond that. You got to hear it. Uh, uh. So that's it, buddy. Um, I, I don't know if you're going to have any questions, but um, you know I love you, and I hope you have fun playing along with this tab. I'll get you the uh, Jolene recording as well in D minor. All right, buddy. Talk to you later. Bye.